my mom was on drugs for most of my life. My brother, my brother died of brain cancer in 1996. My father was never around. That's my apartment complex from when I was younger. It's condemned. It should have been condemned then. Um, this is my photography. Everyone, please say, seen me then. I was always kind of different. I was running from home. I felt like everybody close to me was doing me wrong. A lot of people didn't see me. I had traveled alone. I named myself Odd Rod when I was out on my own. And while my friends were selling drugs, I was studying math. Why would I worsen a condition that was already bad? You see, if everybody's cool, then I'd rather be hot. I could never let my image be a person I'm not. Ain't notice it was poetry. You should have seen me then, searching for a way to beat the drama I was in. Crack it stole my mama. I don't know what stole my daddy. But you asked me would I die for them, and I will tell you gladly. Forgiveness in this warrior was troubled when I came, but I've been writing poetry before I knew her name. You gotta hear my story. See, I'm prepared to fight. I had a lot of lonely days and suicidal nights, but God allowed me poetry. He said that I'm his prince, that though I wasn't meant to be, I'm still no accident. So when I write, I'm living. Breath be in my pen. I was dead before all this. You should have seen me then. And now to reach my city, I scribble down survival. I got them trying to bootleg poems before the book's arrival. Their kids are looking at me. My past provides their future. Lyrically murdered in their rooms, and I've been named the shooter. I claim full responsibility, the blood is on my hands. I'm writing things in ways that all my people understand. Ain't worried about no critics, won't level with no scholars, and you can see accomplishments through medals on my collar. The silver hands for lives I saved, the golden wings for flight, the purple heart for loving those who didn't treat me right. So lay your eyes upon me and tell me that you're proud. Instead of being dead or jailed, I've been rocking crowds. And that is rare where I come from. Survival is unheard. Not everyone is blessed to be immortalized in words. Thus I live forever. My losses carry winds because I've come from nothing. And you should have seen me then. <laughs> then I was broken. I was suicidal. When my brother died of brain cancer, I felt like it couldn't be that hard to die. I wanted to go with him. Everyone, please say, stay. 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 With feet that leave the chair, you hear the tightening of the rope a grip that catches neck and hair, but fails to capture hope. There's no antidote to suicide besides you loving you. You're the sum of all the things your life has brought you through, and yes, we need you here, we do. Your presence has no question. You're thinking you should leave here. We're thinking that you mustn't. It's okay to discuss it. Sometimes you have to cry. The people who remove themselves regret the day they die, for there's no chance to fix tomorrow if tomorrow isn't here. They think of how they're needed right before they disappear, and I remember all my darker days I thought to take me down. I even wrote the letter that they'd find when I was found. I often fantasize my funeral, the sounds of disbelief, cars with flashing hazard lights parading through the streets, but I felt better keeping me because I ran into my purpose. I saved me to let you know that keeping you is worth it. I've seen funerals of coworkers that I had once befriended. They went and punched the time clock way before their shift had ended, left their children and their friends, their parents and their wives, left them all with all these questions spilling rivers from their eyes. Among us are those people who have secretly been hurting. We never know until they go and hang themselves like curtains. The saddest of the draperies, a curtain shouldn't frown. We wonder why they did it when we go to pull them down. I'm awfully glad I stayed around because I see that I was meant. My mama tells me all the time that I was heaven sent, that she was feeling spent and she was feeling low and she would talk to God like I'm about to let this go so you can have this back. I'll need this life no more and you don't have to send for me. I'll meet you at your door. But she decided not and she fought through it all and that is one more life that we don't have to see recalled and I remained as well and that has made me grow. I share with folks my life and they've been calling this a show. Now she sits on that row and I stand on this stage and everything we are is because we made the choice to stay. So stay. When I was younger, my mom would always tell me that she was gonna write Oprah. My mom did not graduate high school and she wasn't the best writer. So when she would tell me that, I was like, I don't know what that letter's gonna look like, mama. <laughs> and she would always tell me that and I thought it was just nothing. And then as I grew older, she said it again. And I was like, I understand you. Everyone please say her wish. Her wish. Mama, remember when you said you wish you could write Oprah? I knew what you were saying. We had a moment on that sofa. I had the attention of a cobra in the presence of a charmer. I saw me as your crop. I saw you as my farmer. Every mother in this world believes their baby is a star. So they pushed them to pianos and they stick them with guitars. But mom, you wanted Oprah. And I imagined with you that moment, thinking if I had the chance, my confidence would let me own it. You watched me overcome opponents even when you stood as one. I used to hate to pass you by out on the streets when I was young. When I was young, I took my writing and used that to save my life. I took a suicidal poem and wrote away from suicide. I know you'd love to contact 
contact Oprah. You are not the best at letters. I see you looking at the phone as if a call would be much better. You want the world to know your helper. You say the city's not enough for there are folks who grab your ankles when they see you rising up. You say that if we contact Oprah, you get far, son, you get far. And I can't wait for you to show the world what soldiers do with scars or what walkers do with cars or what drivers do with planes. You let these people know your story if they never know your name. You show the world what you've been through, baby, and I'm gonna contact Oprah. I wanted this when you were young. I wanted more now that you're older. You have more angels on your shoulder. I've been clean for many years. I used to walk the streets alone at night with dreams of being here. Had no idea of all the hurt I caused. I'm sorry for the strife. I'm overjoyed you took the pain and made yourself a better life. I ain't the best of writers writing. Got no diploma from no school, but everything I never did, I feel I've done it all through you. You best believe I'm gonna write Oprah. Might not spell my words correct, but she will understand my heart because that's all that I have left. I've been to jail and I've been back. I got some friends that's still on crack. I drive the streets I've walked and that is proof that God will build from scratch. And I know just what you mean, mama. Your journey made us closer. You don't forget the ride because you made it off the coaster. I wrote my story out on paper. Now they put my face on posters. I show up at all my shows like mama. I can't wait to show us. We made the very best of life. We have them chapters closing over in a book that'll save some lives, mama, even if we don't reach Oprah. <laughs> My mom's been clean for 12 years now. It's unbelievable, such a blessing. She decided she wanted to cook Thanksgiving dinner a few years ago, it was a big deal. My grandma did that and my mom was a good cook, but dessert, dessert was on its own table. And I decided that I was gonna go for dessert. It was a lot of cakes and it was one pie. So I was like, I'm gonna eat the pie. It's gonna be good. So I tried the pie. African Americans don't cook pumpkin pie. We cook sweet potato pie. And my mom didn't know that. And she cooked that pumpkin pie there. And uh, it was horrible. <laughs> and I told her that it was bad. And I told her from the bathroom. And I, she's been through worse. And I wrote a poem about it. Everyone, please say pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. The pumpkin pie lie offended. It wasn't prepared at its best. But what are the terms of the mother bird's worms that she hustles back to the nest? You see, my mother did more than dig tunnels. Her burdens were heavy to tote, for she had been wounded by hunters, and they shot her down with their dope. Lost all that she knew and became, a victim of crack and cocaine, a bird at its low that barely could float but knew how to hold on to planes. They say things get better with time. I watch my watch watching me back. The ticks and the tocks of her heart and my clock were forcing me close to the tracks. Why I'd lay me away from my problems and I'd lay me away from my woes. I watched Batman watch over Gotham. Well, God was with me, I suppose. Supposed to be dead as a teen, but I made it to college instead. I fought through my low self-esteem. I picked up a pen and I fled. My mother did all that she could. She wanted to be there, she did. But drugs are like termites on wood and they ate away thoughts of her kids. We all have our faults and our fights. My mother fought her faults for years. Well, I was influenced to write. Well, she was influenced by peers. Was her who who decided to change was her who decided to live. We both held our heads through the rain and that is what landed us here. I got my mom back, y'all should know. She's been such a force on my rhyme. Now God may not come when you call, but when he arrives, it's on time. That's why I say more than just poems. My life has been more than just verse. I think of my mom and perform. I watched her come back from her worst. And as bad as that pie was prepared, I ate it with little regret for the chef had been bruised past repair, but she shows that she ain't gave up yet. <laughs> I made it to college. Out of everything that was going on, I made it to college on a full scholarship. It was amazing. College was the uh, University of North Florida, and it was built on a, like a national preserve. And I'm from the hood, so I'd never seen some of the things that I'd seen in college. It was a beautiful lake, and it was deer, and there were geese out there. Never seen that, not in the hood. So I got back home, and I was like, guys, I talked to all my friends. So a lot of them made some bad decisions, selling drugs or whatever, but I would tell them, y'all got to go to college. Whatever you do, go to college. They have geese. <laughs> so amazing. They would always tell me this phrase, well, college ain't for everybody. And I recently saw my transcript from college because I do this for a living and I hadn't used my scholarship or my college education, uh, not the traditional way, but I'm super thankful that I do have it all. So I wrote this piece called Transcripts. Everyone please say, Transcripts. Transcripts. 
I got the transcript from my college, hadn't used them since I left. It ain't school that makes you smarter, but I'm sure that college helps. Sometimes that teacher ain't gonna reach you. There were mornings I was zoned. Lesson plans were on the board, but in my mind, I made it home. They don't make clones for college students. You aren't there and you aren't passing. It was tough to lose my mind and have to use it in those classes. I got the transcript from my college, never opened them to see what they read or what they said, just had to make a way for me. And yes, I wanna get my master's just to say I did that too. It seems like people treat you different when you've made it far in school. I watch friends not get promoted. It was said they lack credentials. It's a shame to not be chosen when you know you have potential and a suit with less experience has just become your boss. They are setting up their office while you stand there looking lost because you will have to train them and you'll struggle with that notion. You said college ain't for everyone. Well, neither are promotions or corner offices or raises or cubicles with plaques or paperweights or pendulums or chairs that lean far back or hour breaks or vacations or parking spots up front or using company cars and company cards to pay for lunch. So you gotta educate, you gotta push yourself ahead, subject yourself unto your subject so nobody takes your bread. I got the transcript from my college, Christmas gifts I never opened, got them just to say I got them. For completion shows devotion and fulfillment gives emotions that you never seem to lose. Now, school ain't make me smarter, but I was smart to go to school because I'm my boss. <laughs> My grandfather raised me. He was very important. He taught me so much. One of the things that he taught me is that older people can say things that don't make sense and pass it off as wisdom. <laughs> grandfather was very wise. He was like, how? So smart, so amazing, so quick with amazing. I remember him not, like I didn't do something when I came in the house one day and he was like, hey, I told you to, to cut the grass and you didn't do that. I don't chew my cabbage twice. So what? <laughs> I don't chew my cabbage. We were at Cracker Barrel one day. We like to eat at Cracker Barrel, it's our place. And we eating, and I look at him, he's eating in a pattern. Sausage, eggs, biscuits, grits, sausage, eggs, biscuits, grits, sausage. He was taking a bite out of everything on his plate and he was spinning the plate around. I was like, Grandpa, why are you eating like that? Oh, every piece deserves a bite. <laughs> You're not gonna make me think that this makes sense. <laughs> this is not wisdom, why are you? But he was my hero and I need to let him know that he was my hero. That was him, that made him up. So as I get older, I can't wait to earn my wisdom. The hero sermon. Everyone please say the hero sermon. The hero sermon. On this porch, I watch a flower lose its petals, face the sun, saying to it, I'm still pushing. When you're ready, I will come. That's my grandpa there, that flower. He is not the who he was. He's been losing all his weight and he's been forced to take these drugs. That's not him how I remember. He had muscles, he was strong. This getting old has gotten old and he's been looking at the sun, seeing God in every gesture, speaking like it's time to go. He always says we never know while acting like his time is close. A shame that heroes must retire. Hurts how he don't use his cape. He lost his strength to change a tire. Shows he's tired in his face. He puts his shoes on really slowly, slides them into place with ease. Insert dagger in my heart to watch him slide away from me. Routine breakfast Sunday mornings, he still has his will to flirt, makes the waitress smile and laugh enough to blush while she's at work, eats his sausage, eggs, and biscuits all assembled in an order. Every piece deserves a bite, he says while sipping down his water. What a man he's been to me, the only father I remember. He brought home the bread and butter, grandma changed it all to dinner. Man, I swear I love my heroes, comic books ain't saved my life. When I think of hope and strength, I see a husband and his wife. I treat my grandpa like my father, cause he raised me like his son. Had a dad who wouldn't bother seeing who I would become. I watch my mama fight with drugs, they say you cannot choose your folks. I wouldn't change them if I could because they forced me into hope. Yes, I swear I love my heroes. Hate to lose them to the sky. And if you love your heroes too, you shouldn't wait to tell them why. You scream out, yeah, I love my heroes. Even if they're here in spirit, know that if you say it right, that you can feel that they can hear it. Grandpa, thank you for your life. I feel you'll never die to me. I watched you be the type of man most men would always try to be. Kept your head cocked to the side, and that was always fly to me. I'll keep your teachings and your fight locked up tight inside of me. Sure that flower loses petals when the rains are not enough, and the sun no longer shines, and the Lord seems fit to pluck. And my mind engulfs with memories of the rocking chairs and talks, and the park begins to cry as it will miss your morning walks. And I will tell you, job well done. Standing ovation is a must for the life God gave to you, which you divided amongst us. I will carry on your torch. I'll take your cape and make it new in hopes of learning from this porch how I can be a hero too. I believe in God, there's no question about it. There's no other way that I got here. Grandma introduced me to God and that was the best introduction ever. And I always feel like he's been listening to everything that I've put out, no matter if I hear him speak or not, I feel like he listens. You know, I always, I still keep my prayers beside me. Everyone please say, the listener. I know that God is listening to my prayer, so I pray. 
that everything I do be something good in some way, that someone can be helped by something strong that I said, that people follow people from the people I led. I would draw in elementary. My mom was on drugs. I was ridiculed in middle school. My mom was on drugs. When I wrote back in high school, my mom was on drugs. And when I graduated college, my mom was on drugs. Now today, I've been on tour, and my mom is at home, shedding tears of inspiration as she listens to poems. Joy was just beyond the mountain. You can easily climb. I never gave up on my mama. We just needed some time. I lost my brother and my grandma, but I keep them within, and I donate to random charities in honor of them. Through my faith, embrace my struggle. Trouble needed a hug. I ain't never seen a fight I couldn't conquer with love. My friends were peddling drugs while I was peddling bikes. I tried to ride away from everything that ruined my life, and for that, I see the nation. I'm known by people as odd. I swear that I can feel you hug me when I hear you applaud. So I know that God is listening. He's brought me this far. I got a motivating message. You can be who you are. I raised my hands to the sky and watched him turn into wings. Out of 50 billion prayers, he's responded to me. He got me preaching to you people. Look what's happening now. I'm a star in certain places, but I'm one with the crowd. So if you hear me, then you feel me. Because I live what I write. That means I always recall. That makes me never recite. That makes my presence surreal. That makes my poems the truth. I'm represented by God. Meet us both at my booth. For I was blessed enough to make it here. May you be a witness that if God is never saying much, I'm proof. You're proof. We're proof that he listens. Thank you. Thank you.